YouTube, it's Tacoma Comics here, and I'm going to talk to you today about Emerald City Comic Con. The Seattle Comic Con comes around every year. Uh, 2018, this will be my third year going, and I'm super excited and really stoked for some of the creators. I was not going to go to this Comic Con until I saw Chris Claremont was going to be there. Um, I owe this man a debt of gratitude throughout the 80s. Uh, not so much when I was older in, you know, 11th and 12th grade, but definitely when I was in middle school or junior, called it junior high school back then, and even a freshman in, in high school. Um, comics were kind of my savior, and the X-Men were, were the top of the comics that I got, you know, Uncanny X-Men every month. This man did a run, um, almost 200 straight issues, uh, spanning at least a decade on Uncanny X-Men from 94 through 279, and, uh, just an amazing creator, um, New Mutants, Wolverine, just did great, great stuff, non-Marvel non X-Men stuff. Um, I love this man, and, and I have not yet had a chance to meet him, and so I'm really excited to get some stuff signed. I've heard that he doesn't charge. I've heard that he does charge. I usually don't pay for signatures because I'm not out to make a buck, but I would gladly pay for his signature just to, to have the privilege of getting him to sign my books. I'd consider it a privilege. So what I thought I'd do today is is go through the process that, that I, I go through when I'm going to a Comic-Con. And you'll see right here, we've got uh, Emerald City Comic-Con, and you got a list of the spotlight guests, which is a bit confusing because they have other guests who are not listed here, and that always upsets me and makes it uh, difficult. There's Art Adams, I got some stuff for him to sign. Um, it makes it difficult to track down and make sure that you've got every guest. I've gotten better at it over the years, but I'm still not perfect. So as I scroll through this, uh, You've got Erica Henderson on Squirrel Girl. Eric Kennedy did some great um, variant covers for Seven to Eternity. Uh, Greg Horn's known for his Venom stuff. There's J. Scott Campbell. That's funny. He had not been here um, at all, and that's actually going to tell you a different story. They just added his name now. Um, you had to go to his Instagram or go to a different page on this site to know that he was going to be at Emerald City Comic Con. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of funny that he's there because he wasn't there even earlier this morning when I was scrolling through the page. Uh, Jamie Hernandez did Love and Rockets with his brother, Gilberto. Um, so all, all these great, great creators are going to be there, and um, I'm really excited to see them. So let's take uh, Jody Hauser, for example. What I do with, and I did this with every single name here, because there's sometimes people that you, they created a comic or they're on a comic you didn't know about. Just go here and type in Jody Hauser. And then we go ahead and boom, click on her name. And so now I get to see all the stuff that she's a writer on and see what comics of her I have. And I, I knew that I had um, Faith. I've got number one. Uh, and I've got number one on this this series as well. So she's got two series there. Um, I do not have Faith in Future Force, but that's okay because the other stuff that I have from her are the Mother Panic, uh, which I absolutely love that comic. I'm excited to get that signed by her. Um, and uh, I didn't like the Mother Panic Batman special, but that's a different different uh, video. Uh, Star Wars Forces of Destiny. I just got that the other day because I was excited for it. You know, and so I go through that, and clearly she's uh, more of a writer than she is an artist, but that's awesome. That's okay. So I do that with every single creator, and then I go, because, you know, I'm a nerd. I have a spreadsheet, of course, and I write down the creator, added Hughes, and write down the booth he's going to be in, and I write down what I have that I might want to give him to sign. I'm still not sure about the Fables Encyclopedia. It's a heavy, heavy book um, to, to drag around with me for like eight hours, but I'm going to do that. So there's Adi Grano with Darth Vader. And as you go down, I might like uh, pare this down a bit. So for example, um, I discovered I already have the field signed by Ed Brisson. Here's a letter on, on Rat Queens. It's just two comics, letter on Shutter. Letters are important, don't get me wrong. It's just two more comics that I don't know that I need to bring around. Um, so I'm going to have to see. Maybe I'll bring them Sunday after I, I get most of my stuff done on Thursday. Those are the two days I'm going. Uh, I just found out I don't have the number two variant. I have like the number one, the number three, the number four, the number five, the number six variants. I don't actually have his variant. So that, that, that upsets me as well. Um, so, you know, I, I make this spreadsheet and I, I get all the comics that I'm going to bring there done and uh, I know there's a few that I'm missing and then I'll also come over here and check out Artist Alley 
in Artist Alley is where a lot more creators are listed, um, and they all have the booths that they're going to be at. Some of the spotlight guests, they haven't told you their booths yet for, for one reason or another. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, and, you know, most of these are lesser known people, people starting out, people who self-publish, people who are on, like, real indie, indie stuff. Um, but, you know, it's important, like, Mateo Scalera, he does the uh, work for Black Science, I believe. Um, so, you know, I think it's, it's, it's important to go through here and make sure that you don't miss anybody that might have been missed in the spotlight guest uh, listing. So, for example, um, over here, the first one, Marta Lejo, and I hope pronounce that right. She's the colorist on Lumberjanes. And uh, yes, Tacoma Comics loves Lumberjanes. It's there. I read it. I love it. So more power to them. They're coming up on issue 50. Uh, you know, I hope it goes to 100. It's, it's a fun book. It's silly. I get a kick out of it. I think the connection I have is camp. I've worked at summer camps and, uh, and been director at summer camps a lot in my, my uh, younger years. And so I have this connection with camp books, I think. Um, at least that's the rationalization I use. So like I said, I go through all this, and if I see anybody, I, I add them to my list over here. Um, and then, you know, finally, I've gone through the comic book database, I've gone through the comic guests, and I've gone through Artist Alley, and I got my list made up. And then I follow G. Willow Wilson on Twitter, and she throws out a schedule. She's going to be at the University Bookstore booth um, just Thursday from 11 to 12, Friday from 10 to 11, well, I'm not going Friday, um, and then Thursday in the evening, if I miss her here, she's at Phoenix Comics and Games, which is a really cool store. Shout out to Phoenix Comics and Games in Seattle. I, I met her there last year at, at Free Comic Book Day, so I guess it's a local store for her or a store she appreciates and, and, and likes, um, or maybe she lives near there, I don't know. Um, I think she's local, so... I'm, I'm babbling on. Let me get focused again. So you got to check these other things. Here's the, the J. Scott Campbell page. Until recently, this was the only thing that they had. Um, and you know, you had to find this. This is under uh, exhibitors, right? Because it's the J. Scott Campbell Roadshow. It's not him, but it's the Roadshow. So he will be there. But, um, you know, and, and, and he's cool. He says the, the first thing you bring me is free to sign. The, the second one is what's going to cost you. Um, and that, that's his business, you know, out of every 100 people that get stuff signed by him, I guess a large majority of them are trying to flip stuff or have CGC come over and, and uh, slab it and verify it, and then it's, it's going on eBay like that. So, you know, not taking anything away from him. I don't usually pay for signatures, but I totally understand why, why some creators do uh, charge for signatures because people are just making money off of off their, their ink, um, and, and they don't like that. So, you know, I, I, I go through all these sites, I get this sheet out, and then I, I go pick out all my comics. Um, let me show you some other stuff here. So this is the way it looks. This is just how big the, the show is. This is the, the main floor, and all the uh, exhibitors are going to be here. Um, shout out to Atomic Comics. When you come in from Boom, they are usually, like, right here. Um, that's my, my, my LCS, my main LCS. There are three comic book shops in Tacoma, but that's the one I go to. So um, they're right somewhere right here, unless I have this backwards and they're somewhere right here. I, I can't remember, but I think they're on this side. Um, Boom Studios, who produce Lumberjanes, always gets this big one right here. And then, you know, if you really want to go into it, I'm going to go to uh, Dark Horse and see if they have convention exclusives, and I'll actually plan out my route, like, through the hallway. Who am I going to see first? Who am I going to see second? You know, what's the ones I have to get to? What can I um, skip? Peace Bonding is where they check your, your cosplay weapons to make sure that they're not real weapons, and they put a little ribbon around it or something. Um, so really cool stuff going on here. Uh, as we go through this, let's just see what we got. Um, so this is the lower level. I want to show you some of the cool stuff that they have going on here, right? Star Wars experience rooms, family break break rooms. I'm not bringing my kids this year, but just to have a place where you can go because no uh, adult that does not have kids understands the absolute like need for just a rest and a moment of quiet you have if you've brought your kids to an event with long lines and lots of people for multiple hours. You know, cosplay workshops, cosplay changing rooms, cosplay repair stations. I love that. Um, not even sure what this one is. Uh, panel hall. 
uh, workshop and screenings, Brick Free Play, so this would be Lego, and you know if you know anything about Tacoma Comics, you know I'm a huge Lego nerd as well. Uh, so there's great stuff going on here. This is Artist Alley. This is one level below the other one, and this is where most of those creators are going to be set up all throughout here um, at these different tables. And it goes up to what Z, then it's A, A, B, B, C, C. So you can get like double I. I know the uh, Elf Quest creators are over here somewhere, double I, eight, I think. Um, this is that university bookstore booth where G. Will Wilson be, more panel rooms and stuff. The Read Pop um, is the company he puts on, ECCC. Uh, let's see if we got anything else. This is the last thing I wanted to show you here. This is kind of a breakdown of the different levels of the convention center. It's the Washington State Convention Center. Um, gaming tab tables, Will Call, and the League of Libations Beer Garden. I might actually stop and have a beer this year. I was too busy last year because I only went one day last year. Um, and Oh, here it is. Uber Eats Pickup Spot. So if you know Uber, there's now the Uber Eats service where you can go ahead and... Um, Different restaurants use it, and you can actually have Uber, an Uber driver, bring you takeout food that you ordered and paid for. And this being Seattle and being super techie place, <laughs> just all up on that sort of stuff. I mean, there's Uber like stands next to the taxi stands at the airport in SeaTac. Um, you can go and pick up your Uber Eats food here, so they don't have to have drivers trying to run inside and <laughs> find you. Um, so I just thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Anything else? Oh, this is just a list of all the different maps I just showed you. So that's, you know, that's what I do to go through this. Um, and, you know, if you're bored, and sometimes I get bored, you can go look at all this. They've got, obviously, movie stars and and TV stars uh, signing autographs. I don't really go that. You can buy your photo op. You can buy a photo op to get a picture with the DeLorean from Back to the Future. You know, there is something for everybody here. This may not be my stuff, but it's going to be somebody else's stuff. So it's really cool. Um, let me skip over now and I'm going to actually show you the comics that I'm bringing to get signed and, uh, and, uh, show you how I deal with that and the process I go through to get them all prepared. All right. Check you soon. YouTube. How you doing? It's Tacoma Comics here. Friday night, six days. I don't know. Six. There's the other one. Six days till Emerald City Comic Con. Really excited. I want to show you this first. A uh, friend brought it over for, uh. Chinese New Year dinner last uh, last week. It's called 19 Crimes. And it's a nice Merlot. It's a, I guess it's a blended red. Um, it tastes a bit like Merlot, maybe not quite as peppery. Anyway, I digress. Um, so you, you get an app and you scan this picture and then like a, a visual of this guy talks and he tells you which of the 19 crimes he committed. There's apparently 19 crimes that in the uh, 18th century, 19th century sent you uh, as a convict to Australia from England. So, uh, Pretty good wine and kind of fun to have an interactive app that uh, reads your wine bottle and then plays a little thing. So pretty cool if you can find that. And it's not a bad, not a bad wine. Um, haven't been shopping recently. I'm out of beer. So we're talking about the comics I'm bringing to Emerald City Comic Con. I have them all bagged and ready. And what I've done with every single one of them is I took a piece of cardboard and I slid it into the bag. And I took uh, an X-Acto knife and I cut a shape around it. So that's the spot where I want somebody to sign. That way I don't have to waste time taking them out of the bag. And that's where you always get your first spine creases, like right near the middle staple, either right above or right below. Just by holding a comic, it tends to bend if you're not holding it super carefully. And that happens a lot, taking it in and out of the bag. So I'm trying to avoid that. So I got them all here. I'm going to go through them kind of quickly because there's, there's a stack. <laughs> A lot of these you've seen before in other videos, but, you know, that's all cool. Um, so I'll just knock through them. Ryan North and Erica Henderson from Unbeatable, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl are going to be there. There's a Halloween Comic Fest special. Uh, there's number one, the second one when Marvel like, canceled series and rebooted them after uh, a real quick amount of time. And there's the other number one. So three number ones there, are two number ones in one shot. I can't show you this next one, but if you read Sex Criminals by Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky, they come out with a Not Safe for Work cover ever since issue, I think, 11 um, through 22, which just came out. And so Erica Henderson did one of those. Um, yeah, you know, you can look it up yourself if you're interested. They're funny. They're not like super risque, but if I got any kids watching my channel, I don't want to totally upset them. So uh, Miss America 
you can, I don't know if you can see the cutout. There you go. Now you can see the cutout. That's where I want the signature, Joe uh, Quinones. Yeah. Uh, he's the artist he's going to be there, and he, he's the artist on this, so you can get him assigned at American number one. Um, he also did one of these. I just happen to have that one as well. And I guess he knows Chip Zdarsky, so he got on Howard the Duck. Um, and there's the, uh, the Howard the Duck, the two number ones that came out at the same time as that uh, unbeatable Squirrel Girl, Squirrel Girl Run. A uh, little Mr. Miracle signed on the bottom here. Mitch Gerides is going to be there. I've also got um, Sheriff of Babylon. And I got like half of the run, but I don't have uh, issue number one. Anybody has an issue number one, let me know, and I'll be super stoked to buy it off of you if you want to sell it. Um, but uh, yeah, I got the trade paperback, so that's going to be good enough there for him to sign. Uh, you've seen this before in my videos. God, I just love this Adi Grano. This is one of the ones where, like, you know, I'm really glad I got the cutout down here so I can sign along the bottom, not to ruin any of the beautiful artwork that he did. Um, he also did the cover for the first um, run that Kieran Gillen did on uh, Darth Vader, number one. So get him to sign both of those. Department H, I already got uh, Matt and Sharon Kint on this, but a lady by the name of Marie Enger is the letter, and she's going to be there. I've never met her before, so I thought that'd be pretty cool to uh, get her signature on that. Jody Hauser's going to be there. Jody Hauser writes Mother Panic. This is a, uh, I think this is the, no, maybe this is the first one. This is the variant cover to, to number one. Um, and Tommy Lee Edwards is also going to be there. He is the uh, artist on that. And apparently halfway through the series or something, um, Sean Crystal became the artist. And he's going to be there too, but I didn't get because yeah, I usually just like getting number one signed unless they're like a really special comic. Uh, got a couple of copies of Faith number one that Jody Hauser did. She actually, I met her and she got me to read, I told her I liked that, and she got me to read the original um, trade that had the first four from this series collected. Um, this is, I guess, a, a four issue limited series that, that started the story of Faith uh, separate from Harbinger Renegades. I'm not exactly sure where she came from in the Valiant Universe. And then uh, I haven't read this one yet. I just picked this up, but I actually read the uh, Ahsoka and Padme um, Forces of Destiny, and it, they're kind of cool. I know they're a kid comic, but um, you don't see Ahsoka in a lot of comics to start with, so I thought that was pretty cool. I've got Thursday and Sunday tickets. Mr. Bendis is going to be there on Saturday. I sort of have a Saturday ticket. I'll explain that later on in the video. Um, but because he's leaving Marvel and going to DC, I, I picked this up at half price the other day. I thought that was just a super befitting uh, cover, you know, just, um, yeah, I thought that might be really cool to get him to sign. Um, I'm sure I'll see him at Rose City Comic Con if I don't see him at, um, at Emerald City this year. So we'll, we'll see. I'll get a chance to find him either way. Uh, but I thought that'd be really cool. And then Marguerite Bennett is going to be there, and she's done a lot of books. Um, I just picked this one up because I knew it was popular. I haven't read DC Bombshells. I did read this, like issue one through five, Insects. Um, I lost a little bit of interest in it, uh, and I think it ended after like issue seven or, or nine or something. I don't think it's continuing, uh, but this I absolutely love by uh, by her. Animosity. There is these are two shoot off comics from the original Animosity: Rise and Evolution. And then as we continue along, I've got Animosity number one. I got one of these that's um, up on eBay. Uh, if anyone's interested, let me know because it's got zero bids. And you know, I'm willing to let it go for like 10 bucks plus you know, a little bit of shipping. Um, but I'll bring both of the number ones to get signed if that doesn't sell. I think the sale ends on Sunday. Let me know if you're interested. Also by her, um, Batwoman uh, Rebirth and the, the Rebirth one-shot, um, and this was co-written by her and James Tinian, uh, who also did The Batman Who Laughs, so I'm really excited to get his signature on that, and uh, Batman the Devastator, these are all the, the metal tie-ins, which are really cool, so there's the Devastator, there was the Drowning, the, um, the red one, I got that coming up in a second, I'm not going to mess up all the names for you guys. I'm sure you, some of you know them anyway. Uh, and then James Tinian also did this one about a bunch of uh, 
backstage hands uh, in the play. I used to do set construction. Um, I had no talent to act or sing, so uh, I used to hang out to set construction, so I kind of liked that series. I think they got a one-shot coming out. Um, it came out on Valentine's Day. I, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Josh Williamson did The Red Death and one of the other metal tie-ins. Um, and then I've already got Josh Williams' signature on the one shot, but I guess this is number one of the, the Rebirth series, so I'll get him to sign that. Uh, Matt Wilson, who I'm not too familiar with, apparently he and Jamie McKelvey did this cover. I'm not exactly sure the story is there. It definitely looks like McKelvey. It's a Wick Div, uh, Wicked and Divine um, homage. Uh, but uh, I love Bitch Planet, and you know I don't have this one signed, but I'm sure I can get Delangio and, and, and DeConnick um, to sign it. They're usually at, at local cons. Um, he lives in Canada, and she lives down in Portland, where it seems like all of Image <laughs> lives these days. Uh, God Hates Astronauts. This is Ryan Brown. You know, I was talking earlier about um, Artist Alley versus the comic guests, and he's one who I didn't know he was going to be at Comic-Con a couple of years ago, Emerald City, but because uh, he was only listed in Artist Alley. So I saw him, I ended up buying something called Goats Eat Castanets, where he took this um, title, basically changed the cover. It was a sketch cover, and inside was the exact same artwork as this book, but totally different dialogue. He changed all the dialogue. So I got him to uh, sign that, and he did a little sketch for five bucks, which is pretty cool. Um, and then uh, he also does curse words, which is, is really cool, with, with Charles, uh, sorry, the other side. Charles Sol 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 Soleil. <laughs> um, I picked this up number one for a cover price just today. I was kind of kind of shocked to get that um, for cover price, but happy, happy but shocked. Just making sure these things are laying flat over here. I'll show you where I keep them and how I carry them to the con in a second. Uh, Terry Moore. I've never read Strangers in Paradise. I just picked this up a couple days ago. And I loved it. I was like, holy cow, I wish I'd read the original series. Got a few stray issues, but I never actually started the series. Uh, can't see the back of this, but the back of this one has a crease. I was really ticked off about that. Went back to one of my LCSs, and he's like, no, I only had that one on the shelf. Um, I've mentioned this before, Terry Moore, Motor Girl. I loved this series. So sad to see it end. But, you know, it was a short story. Uh, he told it. Um wrapped up maybe a little abruptly for the emotional weight of the story, but it, it wrapped up appropriately. Uh, you know, I definitely think it worked. Matt Rosenberg's going to be there. I mentioned I don't have much that I, I need him to sign. Um, Secret Warriors. I forgot to get Secret Warriors. Thanks. Now I've got to go pick out Secret Warriors, number one. Uh, but this was written by uh, Rosenberg, but this cover was drawn by Dan Parent. His uh, name is right down there. And then this one, Archie vs. Sharknado, which was as, as, as bad as it sounds, and bad in a good way, of course, uh, was penciled by Dan Parent. So I don't know Dan Parent either, but he's going to be there. Hopefully the lines won't be too long because I got some long lines coming up. I got this generation signed by uh, G. Willow Wilson, um, but Chris Anka, who drew this cover, is going to be there. I don't know Chris Anka, so that'll be kind of cool to meet somebody new. Uh, I forgot to mention one of those fates was drawn by Kevin Wada, who I think wrote and drew Iceman, um, recent series. Uh, so he's going to be there, so I'll get him to sign that. I did mention this, The Love is Love. Um, this was a benefit book for um, survivors of the Orlando Pulse uh, nightclub shooting. And in it are just like, let me see if I can get this so you can see it. Just one page stories, all by different creators. And I've got one creator who signed it already. And there's about 10 creators that are going to be at Emerald City who, who put their signature on this. So that's going to be really cool to get. So those are the small ones. This is why I'm going. Meet my man, Chris. This is the guy in the 80s. I don't know what I would have done growing up as a kid in high school without him, but he was there, so it worked out pretty well. Uh, my wife just got home. So she's going to say something silly about me making videos at 12 o'clock at night, but that's okay. So X-Men 221, that is the first Mr. Sinister. Um, X-Men 244, that's the first Jubilee. 
there is not black writing on here. That's just where I traced what I was going to um, cut out. Uh, that's Kitty Pride and Wolverine, number one. New Mutants, number one. Same thing. That's um, on the plastic, that black writing. How you doing, sweetie? Not yet, no. You want to take it now? Is it still snowing? Cool. Wolverine, uh, sorry, X-Men 212, Wolverine versus Sabretooth, round one. Um, I do have 213 somewhere here. Let me try to do these in order. So 213, the back of this cover is really bad. I mean, it presents really well. The front of this is really nice, but the back of this is, is crinkled. Still might get him to sign it. Uh, there's 201, first uh, cable in a test tube. Uh, 107, the origin of the Star Jammers. The Star Jammers together as a team for the first time. I, I can't remember. It's a key. First John Byrne on the X-Men, 108. Nothing great happened in that story, but first John Byrne artwork in the X-Men. And then going all the way back, we got X-Men... 102, uh, my mind's gone fuzzy, can't remember why that's a key. Uh, it's the earliest of the ones that are listed as keys or that have something special about them that I have, and then there's the 212 again. So I keep those separate since I got so many of those. I'm keeping those in one of those Gemini boxes, um, which is kind of nice. And let's put it back, fold that up in a little bit. Next box up, and these guys are going to be at II8, Wendy and Richard Peeney. So if you don't know about ElfQuest, this was an indie comic 20 years, no, uh, 15, 16 years before Image and, and before other uh, indie comic um, companies. They were the first independent publishers to uh, really make it and thrive and you know start a business that published not only their own comics, but tons of comics for uh, 30, 40 years now. Um, I don't have the first iteration of the story. They, they printed this story, ElfQuest, which is what they're famous for, in uh, Fantasy Quarterly Number 1, which is a publication that folded after one issue. Um, so they did their original story in this magazine format, um, black and white, 21, uh, 21 issues. And the current, oh, there it is. I did cut out part of that. 21 issues, and this is issue number one. It's actually in pretty decent condition, though this story, like I said, originally showed up in uh, Fantasy Quarterly uh, number one, which costs about 100 bucks to get a decent copy, so I haven't pulled the plug on that yet. Pulled the trigger? Pulled the trigger on that. Um, where I first came across these guys was not there. I'm trying to go in order here. It was Marvel reprinted their series um, in the 80s, and, you know, in regular comic format under the uh, the Epic line, which is a Marvel imprint. Um, there we go. There's Siege of Blue Mountain, another one of their stories, number one. Blood of Ten Chiefs, ElfQuest Hidden Years, ElfQuest Kings of Broken Wheel, ElfQuest Shards, and ElfQuest The Discovery. These are all ElfQuest related stories. Um, you know, they've got their own world that they play in. Um, and just this whole amazing deal. Uh, ElfQuest, the Final Quest special. And so they just started um, Final Quest about two years ago. It's issue number one. It's up to like issue 22 or something. And I think it's ending soon at 24, or 25. So I've been a little lax in collecting that because, you know, $4.99, $3.99. I'm waiting to find them at Half Rice Bookstore for a little cheaper. So let me put my elf quest aside. One more box and then we're done with this part of the video. And like I said, G. Willow Wilson's going to be at the University Bookstore, which is close by. So I'll pop out of there after I get in line for Claremont. He's going to be my first line and probably the longest line. Uh, and I got some beautiful books here. One down here that I'd forgotten about. So I've got this really nice cover of um, Volume 3, Number 1. This is the McKelvey Design cover. I still want to ask if this has become canon, the secret compartment in her wristband, because I've never actually seen that in the comic, but it was on the design cover. First appearance in um, 
animated form. Art Adams is going to be there, so I'm going to get him and G. Willow Wilson both to sign this one. This is a pretty rare incentive variant, um, the sketch one. There's also a color one to this. The rarest of the Miss Marvels from that volume are the um, Jorge Molina did a, a variant for number two that's going ridiculous. I got two more of these. And I already have all my other number ones from that series signed by G. Willow Wilson, but this is number one from volume four. There's an extra one there. And um, an action figure, I, I assume it's John Tyler Christopher, action figure one. Um, and then finally, she did a run on uh, A-Force. She also did a run on A-Force um, similar to the Squirrel Girl and the um, other one that got canceled after a few run issues and then rebooted right away, um, Howard the Duck. She did a, her other run on A-Force with, with Marguerite Bennett. So if I had that, it'd be really cool. And that's the one that has the hip hop cover that was drawn by one of the artists going to be there. So almost done here. Um, the last part of this video, which I guess I'll film tomorrow, is going to show you how I actually categorize these and carry them around through Comic-Con um, so as to keep them safe but readily accessible. All right. Uh, it's about 12 o'clock. I'm going to go to bed, finish filming and editing this tomorrow. Take care, YouTube. Okay, I'm finishing this up in very unglamorous style, going with a handheld phone. This is bag number one. And I put uh, yeah, the Love and Rockets hardcover there for Jamie Hernandez. This box right here is all my X-Men for Chris Claremont. And this box right here is all my Miss Marvel for um, G. Willow Wilson and Art Adams to do this sketch cover he did on that. And that's it in there. Put snacks and some pens, battery charger in there, um, different color Sharpies. Take that pen out, probably put a silver Sharpie in there, just make sure everybody has something. That's good to go. Um, then over here, this is a hard shell inside cooler, and it's the perfect size for carrying these around. Um, I've got all the creators onto their books in here. I already showed you the books before they have the um, cutouts and then these are the ones in blue that I know what table they're going to be at and in pink I don't know what table they're going to be at and then right here this is that uh, anthology I was talking about for the Orlando uh, Pulse nightclub shooting. Uh, I've got every creator that's got something in here and there's going to be like 10 of them so I can get like 10 and maybe a dozen signatures in there and then in here, I've got uh, all my elf quest in there. Um, I had to take out uh, Sheriff of Babylon paper, um, trade because I just didn't have enough room for that. So hopefully I'll get issue number one and get it signed some other time. But those two things get slung over my shoulder and walk around with me at all times to Comic-Con. It's a bit bulky, but it's um, not as bad as some have seen, uh, especially like having this. Remember my first year Comic-Con, I had a backpack and it was like swinging it around, taking a, a comic out, swinging it back, and it didn't have any protection really. Having uh, these in here in the hard shell is nice protection. Once I get one signed, I just pick it up and you know turn it sideways, um, and then it's in there, and it's not in the way. I've got some extra backing boards right at the back, and one or two right at the front, um, probably right behind this, yeah, right there. And that's it, so you know, hope I'm gonna have a really good time. Can't wait to show you all my books and uh, all the stuff that I pick up. But, uh, you know, until then, this is Tacoma Comics. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'd love to hear how you prepare for Comic-Cons. If you think I'm just insane and obsessive, let me know. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Take care.